Welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're discussing issues that I've personally wrestled with, with regard to the faith. This time, can anyone be wise in heaven? But the foolish things of the world hath God chosen, that he may confound the wise, and the weak things of the world hath God chosen, that he may confound the strong. 1 Corinthians 1, 27. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seem to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, I will catch the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. 1 Corinthians 3, 18-20. It certainly sounds from these verses like St. Paul is trying to discourage people from learning wisdom. Saying that God has chosen the foolish things of the world seems to imply that foolish people are better off, and saying, let him become a fool, is puzzling as well. After all, the books of Psalms and Proverbs have a lot to say about fools, including that they shouldn't be given glory, that they say in their heart that God doesn't exist, and that they should be beaten with a rod. That doesn't sound like a path to holiness to me. Now, before I go on, I want to point out that I am far from the first person to be confused by 1 Corinthians. Apparently, the Corinthians themselves were confused when they read this. At the very least, it made them very sad, as it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and chapter 7. Even St. Peter admits that the writings of Paul contain many things that are hard to understand in 2 Peter 3.16. However, he also says that there is a proper way to understand them, and that those who misinterpret St. Paul are harmed by doing so. In verse 17, he even uses the term error of the unwise, which may even be a reference to this precise confusion. You see, here and elsewhere, St. Paul makes a habit of conveying an image of the difference between heaven and earth, man and God, by using terminology that's imprecise and which, if taken literally, would be inaccurate. He means something different than what the words seem to imply. When St. Paul says that the thoughts of the wise are vain, he's not saying that authentic wisdom is harmful or useless. Rather, this is a reference to some of the ancient philosophers and those who followed their ideas. They were usually referred to as wise at the time, even though most of them weren't Christian and didn't know God, as revealed to the Israelites or through Jesus. Many of them, like Plato and Aristotle, had logic to rely on at least, but without an understanding of God, authentic wisdom in the Christian sense wasn't possible, as it says in the Bible, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is prudence. Proverbs 9.10 However, many of these people, in spite of their logic, when they had logic, were looking down on the Christians as foolish and uneducated, much as many still do today. St. Paul's words were meant to assure the early Christians of Corinth that the wisdom of God lay in what these philosophers wrongly thought was foolish. So he's not actually saying wisdom is bad or that foolishness is good, but that the wisest thing is to stay close to God and trust his wisdom over and above the logic of secular men. He's also referring to the need for humility, so that wise people don't think of themselves as wise and be tempted into pride and drawn away from God. When wisdom comes only from the world, it often leads away from God and towards pride. Pride leads to complacency, which leads to carelessness, which leads to weakness, which leads to sin, which leads to damnation. Real wisdom, however, leads a person to be faithful and to draw closer to God. Therefore, it's not a bad thing. And since it's a good thing, it comes from God and is therefore present in heaven to the saints. Next, can people be rich in heaven? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.